in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install the Thermalrite Aqua Elite 360 White AIO All-in-One CPU Liquid Cooler. So this is the box right here. I'm just going to open it up. Without getting too much into it, we're just going to get straight into installing it. Now, if you want to check out the specs to this, then uh, I'll be sure to link the product specifications in the description. And it will also take you to a link to where you can buy one like this as well. So this is basically it. That's how it's going to look. Now, when I look at the picture, I always look how they have installed the hoses. And that's the way that you should also have your hoses as well. This is a 360 millimeter. Let's open this up and uh, see how it is. So far, I like what I'm seeing already. They've already installed the fans for you. Let's check out our mounts. This said it was LGA17 ready. Here we have a splitter cable, which allows you to plug into one PWM connector, and then it splits into three fans for each fan. And it seems here that you do have a 1700 and an AM4, AM5. They give you some thermal paste. In this case, we're going to need the AM5 because that's what we're going to be installing. We don't need any of this as this is the 1700. Today, we are going to be installing it onto an AM5 motherboard. This is what we're going to need. That's everything that you get in the box. Now let's look at the AIO itself. Here is our AIO. From first impression, it looks pretty good. Feels very solid. Not too bad at all for a 360 AIO. Always remember about this warning sticker, you must remove it. What I like to do is straight away undo all the fans. Right, and usually this is set to exhaust. The fan will blow air through the radiator. I'm going to install it onto the top of my PC case. So I want the exhaust fans to blow hot air out of the PC case. We've got a piggyback style connector, meaning that it's a lot easier to connect it. You just keep connecting these to each other and then you connect the last cable onto your motherboard or your hub, whichever the case may be. This is the way that it would install into the PC case. So if you imagine the case is here, just like in the picture that they showed, this will install like that. This is the case that I'm going to install it in. As you can see here, I do have room for a 360, but I have to remove this power supply down. This is the Johnsbo D31 series MATX PC case. So what I need to do now is move this lower so that I can install the radiator. So the radiator is about this thick with the fan, meaning I need that much more room up here. So in order to adjust this, I need to move this power supply down lower to the lowest, that way I get a little bit of clearance. I'm going to remove these two screws and that's gonna allow me to move my power supply down. A full video of this build is coming shortly. I'm going to put it onto the second last one. As long as I have enough room for the radiator, I'm just gonna test fit the radiator now. The radiator does fit, but you have to kind of maneuver it in. In my particular case, I had to come in on an angle like this, right? Because look, you can't just come in straight. You're gonna think that it doesn't fit because as you can see, it hits it. But you know that it does fit because it also says so in the user manual. So in order to get this in, you need to come in on an angle like that and see how it's just missing by a little bit angle it down and then push it on in and now your radiator fits that's how you have to install it in order to get it all the way in i can now install the radiator before i do that if i install this first it's going to be hard for me to get my hands in there in order to install the actual pump let's lay this down firstly we need to install this onto our aio so to install your bracket it will come just like this inside the case but if it doesn't, then make sure that you install it like this. You see how this curves upwards? That's going to be the top. This will install this way, like this. That's how that's going to mount. As for your screws, you only want to put them on a couple of turns. You do not want to tighten it down all the way because then that would defeat the purpose. Loosen it off so it's just on a few turns and do the same to the other side. This is going to install this way because Thermalrite's logo is this way up. So now just ensure that you clip this over these tabs here, just like you would AM4. Now before I do this, I'm just going to secure my power supply back down because I did move it, remember? 
So we'll just get it back in so our power supply stays in place. Right, now, the first thing we're going to do before we install it is remove this protective sticker. I can't stress how important it is to remove this. I'll even admit I've done it before where I've accidentally forgotten to remove this and it wasn't so bad because it didn't end up setting anything on fire or creating much of a burning smell but that's probably because I put so much thermal paste that for whatever reason it kept cooling and it still worked but the temperatures were high. It never shut off but you don't want that to happen. Now we're going to apply some thermal paste. I'm not going to use the one that they give. I'm just going to use the Arctic MX6. Good reviews. I'm just going to use the X pattern. And that should suffice. One. And that's more than enough. Right, so now we can install this. Put it on loose and then I clamp one side on first. There we are, that side's on, and then I get this side on. When I push it down, I ensure that I've already got one side on, which is going to be this side, the bottom side, okay? And then when that is on, I hold it down, and I simply just escort this one over the top and push it on. Right, so right now you can see that it's not on yet. So when I push it down, I ensure that I've already got one side on, which is going to be this side, the bottom side. And then when that is on, I hold it down and I simply just escort this one over the top and push it on. And that's it. Once you have it on, you want to just tighten it ever slow, ever so gently, both sides. And that's basically it. That's how easy it is to install it. Before I install the radiator, I want to route the cables first. So here I have the PWM for the pump and the 5 volt 3 pin as well. So I'm just going to route them through here, push it on through, ready to install. There we go. Now that I've pushed them through, I can install my radiator. I'm gonna guide our cables through. So here's my middle cable, I'm going to push it through the middle and this is going to be my far right cable so that's going to be tucked in here and then we have our last one which is our far left here, just going to push that through here. It's just easier with open space so that's why I'm doing it now. Now that that's in I can now set in the radiator. I come in on an angle. I go all the way to the right and then I slightly go down so that it clears this. Make sure you clear everything else like the RAM and sit it in. You can put in a couple of screws and then route all the cables. So here are the screws that they give you, four for each, so there should be 12. Here I'm just going to put in a couple of screws just to hold the radiator in place. Flip this up now. Let's open this up. Here were our cables earlier. We're just going to pull them through now. Here that is cable there and this cable right here. I want to show you guys how you connect the cables. They give you a splitter. It just makes it a lot easier to plug in all your fan cables rather than looking for a separate port for each. So this will go into one PWM connector, fan header connector. It's down the bottom here. I'm going to plug it in one of those. Our CPU fan here will run the one straight off the pump. That's better. So I'm able to push this all the way over and still be able to use the rear exhaust fan. With all the cables through, we can now plug in all our cables. So we'll plug this into the bottom fan header and we work our way up. The shortest cable will plug into the furthest one which is going to be this one here. Plug that in there. The longest one will plug into the closest and this will plug into this one right here. And then plug it into one fan header. Now for your RGB, you have four. One off the pump and one off each fan. We're gonna connect this the other way. So I'll connect the first fan to the pump like that and the pump to the next fan and then the next fan to the next fan. So just daisy chain like that. 
and then we're left with the furthest fans 5 volt 3 pin ARGB connector and then we plug that into the RGB header and this is the fan that comes off the pump we're going to push that in here so we can plug into our CPU fan 1 header here is our 5 volt 3 pin we're going to push that in through here so we can plug into the 5 volt 3 pin header plug them in and tidy them up here is the fan connector that comes off the pump itself and here is our CPU fan number one we'll plug that in just like that our 5 volt 3 pin just here is going to plug in right here you can see there's a white and a gray the gray is the 5 volt and the white is the 12 volt so you want to plug it into the gray one which only has three pins you basically are just matching up how many pins you have it has two pins on the bottom and one pin on the top line that up and plug it in there we go let's tidy up some cables now just to make it a bit neater i've just separated the cables i'm going to tidy up the aio cables a bit more and then i'll cut off all these zip ties we'll install back the graphics card and Give it a test run. It will, yeah, just add a zip tie. Tighten it. We can cut off all these zip ties because they're really in the way anyways and it will look a whole lot better. Before we finish it and test it, let's just install the rest of the radiator screws. That is all done. We can now have a look at what it looks like fully lit up. Whoa, look at that. Now that looks badass. What do you reckon, guys? I think that looks really really nice and honestly I, I love the way that it complements the case sometimes it's hard to find a AIO that is the same color white as the case but the fact that this AIO is the exact same color as this case is just a bonus you gotta love that that's how you install the Thermal Right Aqua Elite 360 white AIO liquid cooler